So this week we're going to look at 11,000 years of uh, salad history, basically, how we got here. But before we do that, I'd just like to concentrate a little on the landmass as we see it around us, how we got to have the uh, geography that we do. Many hundreds of thousands of years ago, uh, the land masses of both Scotland and England collided. And that the sheer pressure of that landmass coming together caused an eruption in the uh, Earth's crust, pushing up what we now think of as the highlands. Uh, and if you can look into the very far distance there, you can see Ben Lomond. And just beyond we have uh, Dumayet. So coming down to the Oakle Hills, this was thought of as the secondary buffer, if you think the aftershock of that first gigantic uh, amount of energy dissipating in some ways, but still enough energy to force up uh, our own Oakle Hills. And then if we move very nicely over to Salad Hill. So here we have our very own hill. Now, 11,000 years ago, approximately, the Ice Age was still upon us, and it's known that in some areas of Britain, and indeed Europe, that the ice could be as much as 11, uh, as 3 miles deep. And that when the Ice Age started to melt, that it would cut all these gorges. And we can see some of these in the landscape as the water flowed down and would, of course, mass uh, ponds, lakes at the bottom of these lakes. And indeed, many of the um, area, much of the land in Salin and Steel End, certainly, uh, we have like, you know, my back garden is basically made up of clay soil. And this was because at one time it sat under a river. But we also have the remains, and we'll have a closer look later, of the bog just outside of Steel End again, which points to all that melted ice water. So, let's have a look to our first kind of human inhabitants then. There we go, our standing stone. So prior to our standing stone getting here, the first people to have arrived in Scotland after the last ice age, were uh, known to have came up onto the fourth basin, uh, both sides. This would have been rich in uh, the soil, uh, in the fact that it was by the sea, so you had fishing to keep you alive. Uh, so a good place to live. So if we have a look here, we have a rather spectacular view of our Lothian Basin coming up. And there she is, absolutely magnificent. So the first basically hunter-gatherers would have moved up there and lived on the shore and we know for the fact and we have like uh, sites down in Kincardine uh, there was a big site found down there of these people and lots of flints were left or chipped, chipped flint stones and stuff like this so we have evidence of them being here. They would have lived there I don't know a few thousand years maybe a few hundred years but eventually they would have started moving inland and it's my opinion that as soon as they became settled and started to take over areas of land that they would in some ways almost add a kind of you know a marker uh, to my mind and this is where I think this comes in folks a very old standing stone now it can be debated whether this is an actual standard stone we don't know for sure when it was planted but I would suggest that a the stone is an, on a natural position it sits in the very pinnacle of a hill and if we do the 365 degree turn you can see that his view is indeed uh, takes in the whole of the landscape around us. There we go. The other thing is that the stone is sitting uh, upright and that, that's an unnatural position for the stone. So it's definitely been placed there, whoever did it. It's my opinion, well, there's many different opinions on what standard stones represent, uh, but it's my opinion that in some ways it was a marker just to say this is our land, we, we live here, you know, this is our people. And uh, as I say, this in some ways would be the beginning of society. Uh, as we know it today, the very foundations of society from those hunter-gatherers into the uh, Paleolithic age. So, what we're going to do is we're going to wander over to our next uh, site of importance, and that would be, look very closely, folks, the secondary hill on top of Salad Hill there. And if you look very closely, folks, and you have to look very closely, you can actually see. Uh, in certain daylight and weathers, you can actually see almost like a crown-like figure, and that is the remains of a Bronze Age fortress. So let's go and have a look, folks. So here we are, it's one of those Ice Age gullies, and as you can see, about 11,000 years ago when it started to melt, it would cut into the landscape, the soft landscape, and you can actually follow this one all the way down, 
you can see the bottom there. And if you look very closely, you can actually see how it leads all the way right down to the burn at the bottom there. Uh, the fact that a lot of the landscape around here is weedy, rushy, uh, boggy, would again uh, take it back to those early days of just being a sheer floodplain. However, we're going to endeavour. We're near the top now, so I'll see you in a few secs. So here we are on top of the Bronze Age Fortress and I'm looking directly down below to where the uh, Standing Stone is. So roughly the Bronze Age in Britain lasted between 2500 BC and 800 BC. So approximately two, uh, two and a half, three thousand years ago, people would have lived up here. Now the reason for living up here would be uh, amply shown here actually, just as a defensive situation. If we just take a look around here, not only again do you get to see view but you'll see that there's a huge backdrop down here so in terms of a defensive fortification it would make an ideal spot now the other reason for moving up here and indeed living in the area you know important to any kind of life is access to water and as we've already shown there's possibility that there was large locks both down in front of us and behind us so there was always plentiful water but one of the other reasons for living in this area, not, not just on top of the hill, is that the, uh, the land is rich in resources. You know, there's coal, there's iron, there's stone. There are so many minerals in this landscape that you would be hard pushed to find a kind of better area. This would have been the ideal location and the people who lived here would have known that. So I always thought that living in Steel End, that that's, I always put my historical projections on that side of the village. This is where they would have lived, this is where they would have came down from water, etc. But the longer I live here, or the longer I kind of look into the history of our area, I actually realise that the area behind us, and excuse me for the wind, but that is so rich in pits, resources, uh, ancient sites, monuments, in that I think you could probably do a complete story on, uh, or a complete talk on just the history of that side of the valley alone. That would take us right back from the early days, right through the, you know, Bronze Age, Iron Age, uh, right through to coal mine and farm and everything. It has it all there, folks, and it's all kind of marked on the landscape. However, onwards and upwards. So next we're going to move on to the Iron Age itself, and if you look in front of us, I'll try and zoom in on it, we can see Craig Lusker. And there, in front of us folks, on the right hand side as I'm talking, is Craig Lusker Iron Age Fortress. So, let's go and have a look. Okay, so here we are at Craig Lusker, and as we can see, there's not a great deal of information left on the, the board that is here, but I think you can see a rather fine example in the midst of the actual circumference of where the fortress was. It's a very good example of it, I think. And you can't always see that sometimes in the daylight. Now, the Iron Age began in roughly 700 BC and finished in Britain and, uh, with the arrival of the Romans in 3043 AD. However, in Scotland, the Romans never really overtook Scotland. So in some ways, the Iron Age lasted until 500 AD in Scotland. However, before the information was lost from the board, it suggested that this fort was possibly uh, attacked by Romans and possibly burnt down by Romans. Uh, and that we know that if you go to Dun & Glen, there's an ancient uh, Roman camp there. So the Romans must have been in the area. Now one of the reasons again for this place, and it is in some ways beautifully atmospheric today, one of the reasons why this would be just a great site is its views are from the top of that hill, which you obviously can't see today. Again, look across the whole of the basin. You can see the whole of the basin of West Lothians, right across uh, uh, Fife, out to Stirling, etc, etc. Uh, so the views are quite extensive. And also, at the very bottom, if anybody knows this area, there's a huge lock as well. So again, you've got all your amenities here, and it would be a good place to stay. So uh, from here, we're going to head down to Cowstrom Burn. So I'll see you when you get there. So here we are at Cowstrom Burn. And if we just pan across, we can see that it's uh, at the very bottom of the road from Salon as you head towards Gowfall. Bandrum just being over to the side there. Now, we don't know which came first, whether it was Craig Lusker or Cowstrom Burn uh, in terms of the Iron Age fortresses here. But if you look very closely, we can see 
the circular earthworks of the remains of the fortress. Now, we know now from soil samples uh, from the past, and indeed a floodplain, that this fort once sat on the shores of a loch, and that over the centuries the waters dissipated and slipped away. Uh, and that uh, I was talking to one of the local farmers who said when he very first came to take over this land, what he did was he, he actually irrigated it. So I, he dug big trenches, filled it with boulders, and so the water fills in there now. But still to this day, in the wet seasons, you can come along here and see the natural floodplain of the fields around here. So as I said, if you use your imagination, at one time, this fortress sat on the shores of a loch about two thousand, two and a half thousand years ago. So thanks for listening everybody, this is Barry Doyle at Salon and District Heritage Society and hopefully I'll see you soon.